Hello everyone, my name is Zubin Kane, and I'm going to be presenting on Gradient Descent with Spiking Neural Networks. So a Spiking Neural Network is uh, similar to an analog neural network, except of how the output works. The output in a Spiking Neural Network is spikes. Uh, a spiking output is normally considered zero, except when it's spiking. When it's spiking for an instant, you get a little impulse, boom. Um, this means that the traditional analog conversion of the actual output in a given time is converted into an analog output of the rate around a given time, so the number of spikes per time step around a certain time period. Um, so you kind of keep that dimension. In addition, you have another dimension of spike timing, which is when a spike happens relative to another spike. It seems a little odd because they're both related because one is just kind of the average of the other, but you can get two different dimensions and so you can do some more interesting things with this. Uh, here you can see kind of an internal graphic. So in a spiking neuron, voltage accumulates in the middle there, an internal voltage, which is a function of the presynaptic current, presynaptic meaning before the neuron, basically. Um, inside, we have a building up voltage. When it reaches a threshold, the neuron will fire, which means it presents one impulse to the postsynaptic current, which is its output. Um, sometimes this is one-to-one, -one, sometimes there's a very large fan, and it depends on how you set up your network. So some advantages of spiking neural networks, um, there's the extra dimension because you have rate and timing, which is really nice. Um, they have a basis in neuroscience because brains of actual animals used spikes. They don't use analog um, systems. Now spikes can have weights to them, but they don't have an actual output. They have the rate based and the timing based. So that extra dimension is really helpful, especially when trying to mimic um, things like the human brain. And they can run on low power specialty hardware, which is called neuromorphic hardware. It's designed specifically for spiking networks, and it's due orders of magnitude less power than traditional things like GPUs. Uh, disadvantages are trainability. It's really hard to train spiking neural nets um, because they're so complex and new and different, and we don't set them up in quite the same way that we set up analog neural nets, which is how we want to, to train things. Um, and the biggest problem there is the derivative of spikes and impulses. This is a big problem because if you have spikes as impulses, basically as binary, where it's zero and then you have that, you can't derive an impulse because it's instantaneous. And if you want to do something like gradient descent, you need a gradient, you need to be able to take that derivative. So we're going to briefly look at the ideas presented in the papers that I read. So two of them had ideas to actually perform gradient descent by converting this kind of impulse function uh, for a spike into an analog output. One of them was via a uh, sigmoid. So this is the function for a spike, and then it gets repeated down here based on a window. Um, the second paper converted via a gate function. So a gate function is zero, except in a certain area where it's one, and that's the gate function. So as voltage rises here, um, it gets in this threshold area, and this is what your gate is in. And then this change in voltage term lets this, which is the spiking term or the synaptic output, create a spike. And so you get a spike that looks something like this, um, which is analog. Um, there's also a third paper had different improvements to convert from an analog network, so a traditional network you've probably seen, to convert that into a spiking network to run it on different software. And all three of these papers were uh, very well done and very interesting, but the biggest kind of problem that they had was the, the level of complexity. It's a relatively new field, and after they're presenting their initial ideas, they just assume a very vast level of knowledge in terms of what's going on with everything. So it's very hard to try to re-implement them, but let's get So I tried to implement a gradient descent function via a recurrent gate function. So recurrent meaning that the last hidden layer fed back into the first hidden layer, uh, for all of these nodes, and uh, gate function, so it was based on the second paper. Uh, we were trying to train an XOR over time, XOR function. Um, I was able to successfully uh, implement a recurrent gated spiking neural net from scratch. Um, and this was a, one of the biggest difficulties because there's so few tools out there to create different types of spiking neural networks for research. So a lot of people are doing it from scratch or modifying vast sections of code. Um, but I was able to create a recurrent SNN from scratch 
that worked successfully, but my biggest problem was in deriving a loss function because this entire thing is recurrent and it takes inputs over time and expects it to be saved until there's an output and coming up with a loss function for an XOR, something where you have two input spikes that are basically binary and then an output was a big challenge for me. Thank you very much.